All right, you two folks, the Admiral Preparedness here. We got an empty cart at our favorite Sam's Club. Let's go wander around. And looks like all the stand up and standalone freezers are still gone, so they won't be coming back anytime soon. So let's just keep going and see what we got, folks. Looks like they got a whole shipment in. All right, not gonna have no shortages right now for a while. At least through the weekend. All right, folks, to the casual observer, it would appear we have lots and lots of sh sugary kitty food cereals. But hey, folks, you know, if you haven't taken notice lately, the boxes are getting smaller. The boxes are getting smaller. Yep, what they're doing is what they did back in the 80s. They started making the boxes smaller. You pay the same amount. Remember those cookie bar, cookies and candy bars and things that they got smaller and smaller. Look at these, look at these boxes. Look how small these are. Look how small. The width of my hand. And when you come over here, And then you look at the Kellogg's Frosted Flakes box. See where my finger's at? Where my wrist is? The boxes are getting smaller, folks. Keep an eye out for that. You're paying more for less. Ain't that a shame? All right, folks, we see one thing here. It's called raw stuffed chicken breast, creme brie, $3 off. You get six of them. They're raw, so you have to put them in your oven cook them right up but I tell you what these folks these are very tasty I've had these before and I really like them they're not really low carb but hey nothing ever is good afternoon folks Admiral preparedness here well we just got done uh, doing our Friday shopping and now we're gonna start heading towards the homestead and I want to take this opportunity to have a little chit chat because I really don't get to do it much because I don't drive that much nowadays only because I don't want to and if I go out I spend money so what we want to talk about today just in general speaking is uh, we have a situation where everybody's all predicting a food shortage and supply chain shortages because of the second and third rounds of this ick now wherever you're at i feel your pain because i'm feeling the pain too only in stress because all it's doing to me is just i'm just laughing because i'm a prepper i'm ready to go it's all set just sitting here filling hole. then my diet has to change that didn't make things any better uh the breathing difficulty is just being stupid when I was young and smoking cigarettes and quit 27 years ago, but a lot of smoking and it caught up. It's caught, it's caught up with me. But I can survive that, I think. Just need to start getting a little bit more exercise and, you know, get off the goddamn couch. Uh, Ick has made everybody couch potatoes, and I feel for them. I'm one of them gained about 10 pounds so here we are today it's almost a week before Thanksgiving in America when the pilgrims came over see I live over right I, I, I'm a, a skip and a jump just away from Plymouth Rock and a few years ago we go there and uh, uh, break bread with other fellow Americans at the location of the first Thanksgiving and then times got tough and so we decided to postpone on that now, today, the land of good and plenty. Well, folks, you have to understand that we're all here together because we're all working together. We all are trying to do the same thing. Raise our families, have a good life, die. You know, that's pretty much it. Leave something behind that your relatives can remember you by if, if, if they can. A lot of folks out there pass away and you don't even know they existed. I'll be probably one of them. But I had a good time while I was working. I'd enjoy myself. 
made a lot of friends, made a lot of enemies, and you know, you break bread with all the folks that you uh, try to and get along. But right now, America's in a situation. We're divided like we've never been divided before since the Civil War. You could sit out here and you look at people and you just know that if, they, if you knew what your political affiliation was, they'd just rather just run you over. Those days are going to end. We all know it's going to end because as we, as our country was set up, there is no monarchy. So every few years, leadership changes. Uh, sadly, there's good leadership, and happily, there's bad. There, there's leadership that's bad or good, <coughs> good or good or bad. <laughs> Sorry about that. Good or bad leadership. <coughs> Somebody stink our car up. Good or bad leadership, we'll get through it. Every four years, or every eight years, you get a change. That's built into the Constitution. Now, for now, we're just working on getting the one leadership out and the next leadership in, and we'll see how that goes. As for me, uh, it doesn't really matter. I'm retired. Just don't mess with my pension. Don't mess with my Social Security. We're good to go. If you're going to do all kind of stupid stuff, just do it not on my time. All right, we're on the freeway. So, coming up at the end of the year, let's start talking about tax season. You know, make sure all your ducks in a row, your deductions are all there. You're able to make yourself all nice and happy. As far as the holiday buying season goes, you know, don't overspend, folks. Uh, go down in your basement or your attic and find something you gave your loved one 25 years ago. Rewrap it, re-gift it. That'll be a hoot. You know, I did that for several years in a row and nobody even noticed. Especially the youngsters. Good Lord, you can go in their bedroom, box up all their toys, wrap it around a box, put some big old bow on it. They're just happy as a pig in mud because they're playing with the box. They don't care about the toys. You'll end up stepping on them at 3 o'clock in the morning when you're trying to get a drink of water anyway. As for the new year, it's coming up, folks. It's going to be 2021. The double O is going away. The dumpster fire is going to be put out. Everybody's going to be happy. We'll have a new administration down the road, I guess. Uh, and whatever you, <laughs> whatever you look at will be much brighter. Because remember, you can't dwell on the past, but you can always look forward to the future always look forward to the future and if you don't you're a dummy sit there and moggle and groggle and got all and got all yourself all excited about getting out of 2020 man i don't have i don't plan on having a party because i'm just me and the kids and the wife but the point is get out and have some fun in 2021 i've never seen gas prices this low in eight years nine years I just filled up for a dollar eighty and nine tenths. Cost me twelve eighty six. Holy Toledo! If I could go back and pill it, put some more gas in my car, I would have. Now, as far as the uh, prepping goes, always, always keep prepping. Never stop because we don't know the future. We got these Chinamen out there causing some trouble. Uh, Taiwan is in serious straits. You've got these fishermen off the coast of Vietnam fitting off these Chinese fishermen because they don't understand international borders. I got a feeling we're going to have, we, we still got to deal with that. Remember, North Korea, uh, he's being pretty quiet. He's being real quiet. But I got a feeling when the uh, administration changes, he, he'll start pulling some shenanigans. Uh, be expecting, uh, well, I really don't want to try to predict the future because I don't have a crystal ball. But when you got a weak government in place, uh, the shenanigans start all over the planet. They, they test the waters to see where, how far they can go. Uh, if, we, if we reduce our watchfulness, then it's going to happen, folks. Somebody's going to pull the old, let's see how far I can push them. You know, the giant sleeping bear is us, the U.S. We're still a formidable power, 
and for the last four years there really hasn't been anything on the horizon all of the people who are supposed to be doing their jobs have been doing their jobs ensuring that that doesn't happen here uh, it's still going on around the world but quietly it's been happening the media is not really playing much up on it uh, that's just baffles me to death but we have a strong military uh, budget cuts will come because uh, the tax spenders are out there spending more than they're taxing and then they're going to want to tax more so they can spend more so be ready for that one too there will be some economic changes I'm sure uh, we have to understand that it's that we're in a cyclical economy right now we, 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 we had a forced upon a recession it was uh, forced upon us for health reasons I, I disagree with some of the ways that controlling the ick was held but eh, what the hell I'm still I'm still healthy I haven't got the ick yet it was a scare but we're good we're good to go we're good to go now a little bit of a health issue but I think we'll survive the one thing you want to remember is during the holiday season is now that we're, we're, we're having to do all this social distancing and personal protection and trying to stay well that the vaccine's on the way I'm hoping by the time I get home that the uh, vaccine through Pfizer gets its emergency release authorization and the military can start distributing this vaccine nationwide too sweet and fast I don't know about you folks but uh, I don't care I know enough about science to know that all this red tape that takes to get vaccines approved got cut because they knew they could get it cut I mean everybody was making millions and millions of dollars tying up the the, the, the authorization to get vaccines released because they're over over being over safety wise I mean if you could if you know that the efficacy of a vaccine is 95 percent and above get it out into the public you may have 0.1 percent of uh, somebody who reacts to it negatively uh, well the, hey man you know <laughs> the good of the many outweighs the good of the one so you take it in your shorts you take it in the cheek and you make sure that the American public and the world is protected but I got a feeling that through this through this new well through this process that you're gonna see a lot of new drugs come out really really quick now that are gonna save a whole lot of lives now that's a good thing well the bad thing is how long do you want people to live for I mean there are folks out there right now that are pushing over a hundred that are that are more than a basket full now these folks are just sitting there they're not mobile they're I mean God bless them all they're a hundred and something years old but through DNA and through genetics you might find a way to reverse this aging process I've seen some studies and I've seen some research that holds promising truth to where we may be able to hold off aging uh, at, at any age. You just stop the aging process. Nobody wants to be seven years old forever, folks. Trust me. There was a movie once, Out of Time, where you know you you you, you the whole system was based on you stayed 26, and uh, you, you, if you didn't work, you didn't you didn't stay alive. You weren't productive. That's all here and there, folks. That's all fantasy, but. The future holds a whole lot for young folks. Now, us old timers, all we're doing is wanting to retire and enjoy and travel and uh, be with our grandkids if you have any of those or your other relatives that are still alive that are your age and you want to get back together and, and, and reconnect or whatever. Technology's letting us do that. My God, just right now, I'm talking to you 40 years ago. This would be like, what? What's this knucklehead doing? That's, sci that's all sci fi. Cars and talk. The biggest thing now is automobiles. I'm looking for that future where well, I don't have to handle this steering wheel no more. I can sit here and take a freaking nap or uh, <laughs> watch a movie or get my education advanced while I'm, while I'm going from point A to point B. A lot of people won't be getting run over. A lot of people won't be getting uh, killed in stupid accidents when somebody's gawking at somebody or chatting on a chit-chat or chatting whatever. They're, they're being distracted. 
the automobile will be 100% really what it is, an automobile. Now we got, then we'll have flying, the ability to fly from point A to point B. That's exciting too. Uh, uh, these uh, long haul airports will start to dry up. You'll be able to hop, hop, skip, and hop, and skip, and hop, and skip. It's like you're taking a bus. The future's coming, folks. As long as we don't have a coronal mass ejection or somebody decides to take one of these uh, nuclear weapons that's just floating around out there and let it off or another pandemic. You know, 1919 was the last time the United States had a, a serious killer. This one here is 250,000 plus. You know, when you got 360 million people and only 250,000 have died, then you look at the, uh, the demographics of those folks that passed, it's not much. Unfortunately for some folks, they may have lost a loved one, and I apologize for if it sounds crass, but those are the numbers. I, I didn't make them up. Now, as far as the pandemic of the future, you know, there are these chemists are out there in underground facilities just dreaming up ways to kill each other, to kill you and kill me, and make sure that we don't survive. But there's other geniuses out there who are fighting. Now, the biggest threat right now, <coughs> excuse me, the biggest threat right now would be destroying the economy. It, uh, uh, people are still spending money. As long as we don't go completely digital, I think we'll be okay. And that reminds me, folks, have at least a couple hundred bucks. Have at least a couple hundred bucks cash, small bills in your possession, somewhere at home, put in a safe place. That way, when the electricity does go out and people continue to use cash as barter, uh, you'll be able to do that. Now, the other thing is also remembering that it's, uh, it's smart to have coins too. Not a lot of those things going around. Just don't buy into this digital monetary system completely, folks because it could destroy your ability to um, function. So we'll be right back, folks. We went ahead and got ourselves where we're going to go, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. And remember, folks, it can happen from the north. It can happen from the south. It can happen from the east or come from the west. Always be prepared. And if you've enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. Or I'll be out there waiting for you to come to me. Admiral Preparedness, God bless you all.